squad over the road. <laughs> Hello, squad fans out there, and it's here. It's here. Yes, the new version 9.4 is here. It's dropped like a bomb, like a mother. Boom! It's here. Now, we know it was coming anyway from being in testing. We were playing around with mortars and a few little goody goodies, but we're not allowed to talk about that. Not allowed, Para. But Para, you accidentally put a little comment up saying that things were coming soon and you got kicked off the test server. Oh. So frustrating. It wasn't intentional. So I'm, I'm out of the test. Booted. Gone. Karma said, I am the law. And the law says, Parry, you are gone. Devastated. Devastated. But anyway, so I managed to get some footage before the boot went up my jacksy. And today we're going to go through 9.4 because I know a lot of you lazy bastards out there just going to download it and jump in and go, oh, well, I don't know what's actually new here. So I'm going to show you right now. Let's jump in and have a look. So here we are. This is the info straight off the website, Alpha 9.4. Oh yeah, and you already know kind of like what's going to be in here, but we're going to go through this anyway. So I'm not going to bother with the trailer, you get the ideas. Uh, they've been working hard to bring the new systems integrated, and we have mortars, mines, IEDs, and vehicles to boot, and you can download this right now on Steam. So don't go just yet, come back. Let me go through it first, and then you know. In fact, started downloading, then come back and watch this, and we shall go through it together and have a look. So let's just zoom in a little bit here. So all the vehicles in the game have had a ticket reduction, um, some more than others. Um, again, I'm just going to scroll through this. There's no point in discussing a lot of this because this is not, you know, this is not the juicy good stuff. This is not what we're here to have a look at. So as you can see, blah, blah, blah. How do I go back? Go back, please. Thank you. And there's the second one, but as you can see here, the MATV. One with a chrome, one without. Beautiful! Now it says, uh, I'm not actually sure what this six means here. It's worth 12 tickets, and that one's worth 16. And uh, get five guys in that one, four in that one. Beautiful. And we also have this new one down here as well. Fantastic. Which we'll probably get to look at a little bit as we get further in. Let's come back out. Um, all recruit kits now have an entrenchment tool, so they have a better chance of getting a kit back after a squad kick leave. It's fair dues, yeah. When a heavy anti-tank hat directly hits an armoured personnel carrier, the APC, the, all the others, it will no longer instantly blow up. The vehicle will burn up and be destroyed, but now the crew and passengers have a chance to get out and fight through the ambush. Not sure what I think about that. Um, not quite sure what I think about that. I think that would have been... Well... It is what it is, that's, that's, you know, it is what it is. So, the heavy anti-tank kit has moved to the fire support category, so that the squad must think a little harder on which kits they want in the squad, and what they will have to be without. Yeah, nice. Heavy anti-tank kit is now limited to a maximum of one per team. It still unlocks at 20 players on your team. I was sure it was one per team anyway before, wasn't it? Or was it one per squad? Um, all medics now have one fragmentation grenade. That is fantastic. We've been asking for that for ages. The devs listened. They went, Oi, what do you want? And we went, We want grenades for a bloody medic. And lo and behold, we got one. Hats off to you. Uh, they've reduced the fragmentation grenades from two to one for the scout kit, which kind of makes sense now because the scout kit actually has the IEDs. So, uh, yeah, makes, makes complete sense. Limited the scout kit to a maximum of six per team because at the minute, everybody's going to want to play scout now. Nobody played scout before I did. I love the weapons. Everybody's going to want to do that now just to play with the IEDs. Uh, increase the limit on the scout kit from three to four members before it is available. Yeah, added one TM62 anti-motherfucking tank mine. One big bastard IED with an IED phone detonator. Maybe it's a Samsung, because they blow up anyway. Genius. Genius, para. And you like this bit. And five decoy rocks. Yes, you can actually put rocks down. And another thing you can actually do with the mines, when you put them down, these mines here, you can get your shovel out, and you can shovel them down, so just that top plate there is visible. 
Brilliant. Brilliant! And believe me, as I mentioned in the previous video, if you've got your headphones on, full blast, when one of these goes off, you're going to be using sign language for the rest of your life because they are friggin' loud. Perfect, it's what we want. Awesome! And these are the IEDs, which are two mortar rounds connected to an old, I don't know what that is, is an Ericsson, Sony Ericsson mobile phone again. When these goes off, if you're infantry near these, <laughs> you'll see. Um, you can now add deployable rocks and covers to the scout class for mine concealment, which is it's just brilliant. A scout can have three anti-tank mines deployed at any time, up to five decoys deployed at any time, and only one large IED on the map at a time. Placing a new one will remove the old one. When you place a mine, you can dig it further into the ground to help conceal it, which, again, is just fantastic. And another thing, actually, is when you place an IED or a mine on the map, it actually shows it for the whole team as a little skull and crossbones. Uh, we have the mortars in there. Mortars come with a magazine of three rounds. Reload this, and you can see the mortars in my previous video if you want to have a look. The current set of mortars in squad has a range of about 1,230 metres. Now, it's funny that because the actual mills goes up to 1,500, so whether that's an issue with maps or gameplay, I'm not sure. I did think this was a little bit off when I was testing it in one of the previous videos. Uh, currently, mortars fire high-explosive rounds. More options will be available. I'm hoping this means illumination rounds and smoke rounds uh, for squad leaders to call in. Uh, game's getting much more tactical now with more tactical options, so that would be fantastic. And there's one there. Um, and when you actually get up close on these, the detail is really, really nice. I mean, some of them there's actually rust and um, uh, almost like an embossing effect on some of these. It, they really are nice when you get up close and have a look at them. We also have the AMRAP. Now, I call it the AMRAP. It's in the MRAP, a heavy jeep. These take a lot more damage they need traditional Humvees from RPGs, etc. And I'll probably do a video on testing these at some point. And we also have this Russian little bastard. Look at that. It looks strong as a mofo. Um, it's actually got a 14.5mm turret on it as well for the Russians. Very nice indeed. On my main bases, now you can't de deploy stuff in the main base. Makes sense. Stops idiots messing around. Engine sounds have been decreased. The APG-7 and the rockets, um, apparently they were firing at too high a velocity um, and have an accurate and lower muzzle velocity. So it looks like that's been changed now, so it's going to make it a little bit harder for the RPG guys out there. Um, it says here, fragmentation rockets fly the straightest, heat drop off, and the heavy tandem rocket finally feels as fat as it looks, like my norm. Reducing the rearming time uh, and it added randomized deflection for penetrating projectiles upon exiting a material a bullet will deflect depending on the material So it's like you're gonna get more splash damage now from bullets ricochets things like that As you can see there's a little bit of an example there of the actual round of fragmentation going through obviously with the big guns bush straight through brilliant um, We've talked a little bit about this. There is actually a benchmarking tool now um, it's all been reorganized. A lot of the UI has actually been changed. And there are some brilliant things in the game now, such as before when you would see an enemy on the map, you would go, oh, it's roughly a C, C2, keypad. Well, now that's been done down here, wherever you put your mouse now. So A1, keypad 1, 6. And if you're not sure, look at your keypad on the right, and that's how you break up those category of keys. It's already done for us now, so another fantastic feature that's actually been put in there. And actually, down at the bottom, we also have the grid, which is going to help you when it comes to mortars and working out the distance, etc., etc. Now, one thing I really wish they would have added is for the scout and things, when there are four things, such as IED, mines, telephone, rocks, you have to click one, put it away to bring out the next one. So I was hoping there would be a system such as shift... One, two, three, four, that would enable you to jump straight to that one, but that'll come as part of the new animation system, which is coming in the next one. So let's move on. Uh, yeah, we know about this. This is the dynamic grid down there, which actually changed. So you move the map over, and we know that that's 33 meters at that zoom scale. Fantastic. 
Um, they've also added a green request fire mission marker for the squad leaders to use when communicating with the mortar squads. Now, I know a certain somebody from Royal Artillery, Mr. Stewart, who's going to be sat having a dump eating a pot noodle in that mortar pit. He's going to be waiting for the call, and now the squad leader can put down a marker down. Obviously, then we need to work out the distance to that, or well, the squad leader may tell us the distance from the pit to the impact. Dial it in. <coughs> Jobs are good. But of course, your mortar pits are going to need some protection, so you're going to need somebody to look at, actually look after them. Um, added a vehicle health bar for when you're inside a vehicle. I. That's the worst part of this update. To me, that feels arcade. I don't want to know. It's not realistic to know what that what that is. That's for me. That's terrible. I, that's but anyway, it's in. Uh, added enemy mortar spotted marker for marking enemy artillery positions. Right, audio. We've got new audio on a couple of the maps here. Kokan and Al Bashra. We've got new uh, pistol sounds. Modified HMG close up fire sounds. New fifty cal bullet snaps. Oh, we love that in squad. Added mortar sounds, fire and explosion sounds. Believe me, they are the tits with a capital wonderbra. Uh, added mine explosions again. Watch your friggin' ears. Now, on maps, there are, there's a new layers added for quite a few of them. I'm not going to go through all this because we're going to be here all day, but there is new lighting for Basra, which personally I think now is too bright. It's lost that Middle Eastern vibe, but, you know, you know it's... What can you say? It is what it is. The map maker, that's what he wanted to do, so that's what we've that's what we've got. Um there's relight on your vehicle. We've got new trees on Fools Fool's Road. Uh Jensen's Range has been updated with all new signage, and you can play with the mortars offline on Jensen's Range as well if you want to get in as well. Uh there's a new game mode called Invasion. The game mode bears remnants of Coat. Basically, there's a barrier at the beginning. One side gets is is completely underpowered. As you can see here, and all but the first flag, and the attacking team needs to capture. It's it's almost like a we're going to bunker in, and you're going to fight to get back. A little bit like uh, insurgents mode. Maps containing invasion uh, invasion include all those um, radio tower renamed to invasion. Got a dog. So as you can see, a few of these attacking side have been changed. It's it's all good. It's all good. The best way for these is literally just get in and play it. You'll work it out as you go along. Chore night, one of my favourite maps actually. Uh, that's all in there. Um, uh, expanded storage, uh, conquest uh, from 500. Log logistical trucks have been added to all infantry layers for future proofing and general gameplay. So we're going to have a quick look at the bug fixes. Ah, uh, let's have a look. Radio tool, stamina widget not showing. Shovels, collision. That's a nice one. Fixed shovels not finding the collision of deployables properly. That's a nice one. Um, fix rug rag dolls, multipliers, fix. But anyway, basically, this is a brilliant update. Apart from the mortars and the IDs, you may think, well, there's not a lot in there, but they've done a lot behind the system to actually start improving this more. As we know, as I've said from the beginning, when the stars are aligned and everything comes together, this game is unbeatable. It is unbeatable. So get in, get it downloaded, enjoy the game. And let me know what you think of the mortars and the IEDs. You're going to absolutely freaking love them. I'll see you on the battlefield. I'm usually in the Exodus server. Come over and say hello. Don't shoot me. Don't be a cunt. I'll see you on the other side. Hey.